Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to tell you about snakes. There are further than 10,000 species of snakes on the earth and they re set up far and wide except in Antarctica, Iceland, Ireland, Greenland, and New Zealand. About 600 species are poisonous, and only about 207% are suitable to kill or significantly wound a mortal. Non-venomous snakes, which range from inoffensive garter snakes to the not-so-inoffensive python, dispatch their victims by swallowing them alive or constricting them to death. Whether they kill by striking with venom or squeezing, nearly all snakes eat their food whole, in occasionally stunningly large portions. Nearly all snakes are covered in scales and as reptiles, they reek cold-blooded and must regulate their body temperature externally. Scales serve several purposes, they trap humidity in thirsty climates and reduce disunion as the snake moves. There have been several species of snakes discovered that are substantially squamous, but indeed those have scales on their bellies. How Snakes Quest Snakes also have diverged speeches, which they flutter in different directions to smell their surroundings. That lets them know when peril or food is near. Snakes have several other ways to descry a snack. Openings called hole holes in front of their eyes smell the heat given off by warm, thoroughbred prey. And bones in their lower jaws pick up climate from rodents and other scurrying creatures. When they do prisoner prey, snakes can eat creatures up to three times bigger than their head is wide because their lower jaws unhinge from their upper jaws. Formerly in a snake's mouth, the prey is held in place by teeth that face inward, enmeshing it there. Habits About formerly a month, snakes exfoliate their skin, a process called ectasis that makes room for growth and gets relief of spongers. They rub against a tree branch or other object, also slide out of their skin head first, leaving it discarded outside out. Utmost snakes lay eggs, but some species like ocean snakes give live birth to youthful. Veritably many snakes pay any attention to their eggs, with the exception of pythons, which incubate their eggs. There are roughly a hundred snake species listed by the IUCN Red List as risked, generally due to niche loss from development. Then's a fact to make ophidiophobes feel uneasy five species of snakes can fly. Sea snakes. Utmost snakes live on land, but there are about 70 species of snakes that live in the Indian and Pacific abysses. Sea snakes and their relatives, krites, are some of the most poisonous snakes that live, but they pose little trouble to humans because they re-shy, gentle, and their fangs are too short to do important damage. Since the late 1970s, invasive Burmese pythons have been wreaking annihilation on southwest Florida, gorging up native species and harming the area's biodiversity. With no natural bloodsuckers to keep the population in check and plenitude of delicious creatures to feast upon, the pythons are getting bigger and further rich. Now, biologists say they v captured the heaviest snake ever set up in Florida a 215 pound. 18 bottom long Burmese python that had likely eaten an entire adult white tagged deer for her last mess. Biologists also set up 122 eggs developing inside the snake, which they believe is a new record for the number of eggs a womanish python can produce during a single parentage cycle. An average clutch is around 43 eggs, officers said at a June 22 news briefing. Scientists with the Sustentation of Southwest Florida, a nonprofit environmental advocacy group, tracked down and humanely euthanized the monster snake as part of the association's sweats to check the invasive python population in the Florida Everglades. Native to Southeast Asia, Burmese pythons have been gaining ground in Southwest Florida since 1979, when the first snake was likely released by a pet proprietor or escaped into the wild according to the nonprofit Nature Sustentation. Though it's insolvable to know for sure, biologists believe the large lady they lately captured could be the original python that set up her way into the nature decades ago, reports Amy Bennett-Williams for the Fort Myers News Press. 
Since also, the snakes have been thriving in the Everglades so much so that biologists now ask members of the public to help them quest for pythons every August. Actors can contend for colorful prizes, including $500 for landing the most pythons during a two-week stretch. Last time, further than 600 people from 25 countries hunted the snakes. Scientists, in particular, tend to concentrate their sweats on removing large, reproductive ladies to help disrupt the parentage cycle. To hunt this mammoth womanish snake, biologists stationed a manly scout snake named Dionysus, or Dion for short, equipped with an implanted radio transmitter. Dion led experimenters right to the large lady, which scuffled with the biologists for about 20 twinkles before eventually surrendering. How do you find the needle in the haystack? You could use attraction and, in an analogous way, our manly scout snakes are attracted to the biggest ladies around, says Ian Bertoshek, a wildlife biologist with the sustentation of southwest Florida, in a statement. After hauling the snake through the trees to a field truck, experimenters took her to a lab for a post-mortem. In addition to the 122 eggs, they also set up hoof cores, which suggests she swallowed a deer kindly. Lately, when stretched out, the snake's length was equal to the height of a giraffe, reports insiders Alia Shoaib. Over the times, experimenters have set up dozens of other types of wildlife inside the tummies of pythons, including 24 species of mammals, 47 species of catcalls, and two species of reptiles. Pythons have contributed to the decline of some mammal species, including swampland rabbits, cottontail rabbits, foxes, raccoons, possums, and bobcats, particularly in remote corridor of Everglades National Park, per the U.S. Geological Survey This is the wildlife issue of our time for southern Florida, says Bertoshek in the statement. Traditional trauma inventories like reek and towel cements do and actually stop bleeding or aid in clotting during an exigency. The body excels at stopping bleeding on minor injuries, like cuts and scrapes, through blood coagulation or clotting. Still, when a traumatic injury occurs, the body's complex mending process frequently cannot meet the unforeseen inviting demand to halt blood coming through a crack. In this process, specialized cells and proteins initiate a metamorphosis of blood and lymph from liquid to a gel to form a blood clot. Red blood cells and platelets also form a draw at the injury point while fibrin protein beaches strengthen it, Cosmos reports. The new bioengineered gel pets up this process with the help of the proteins Ecarin and Textilinin. Ecarin, from the aphorism Gaged Serpent's Venom, promotes the coagulation that initiates rapid-fire blood clotting, while Textilinin, from the Eastern Brown Snake, prevents the breakdown of those blood clots making them hardier and longer-lasting, according to the study. Procoagulant proteins are deadly when delivered to the body as venom from a snake suck. The venom stops blood from flowing inside modes and highways, starving organs and apkins. Still, the synthetic hydrogel only applies these proteins in small quantities at our original point, without allowing wide rotation in the body. The gel is also thermoresponsive, so it's in liquid form when stored in a cool place but will solidify at body temperature to seal the crack, a statement explains. Experimenters set up that when testing the venom gel on mice, stable clots formed within 60 seconds compared to normal clot function, which takes as important as eight twinkles. It indeed controlled bleeding in the presence of the generally used blood thinner warfarin, reducing bleed volume the chance of the total quantum of blood each mouse has that was lost in tests, from 48% to 12%, per cosmos. We hope this gel will accelerate the crack-mending processes demanded for clotting and reducing blood inflow, eventually boosting the body's capacity to heal large injuries, Kijas says in a statement. The gel is presently witnessing preclinical testing and is being gauged up for marketable operations. The platoon hopes to explore further how the gel could be used to treat backs and trauma injuries.